Congresswoman Lauren Boebert, the um, firebrand representing Colorado's third congressional district, is now facing a tough race in November, thanks to a series of personal controversies, also an undersell. Basically, <laughs> she went to a fundraiser in New York City with Donald Trump and got so drunk they had to cut her off and then tried to take repeated pictures with Trump and then they had to tell her, hey lady, like, tone it down. Yeah, according to the witnesses, this is how it went down. And remind viewers here that this came a few months after that she got in trouble and had to apologize for her conduct at a Denver theater where she was watching a performance, a musical performance of Beetlejuice. And, you know, she got kicked out for vaping and being loud and there's security footage of it. And so this is just an it example. It's much more than vaping and being loud. <laughs> yeah. Although I do, I, ex I appreciate your attempt Maybe to the this the family PG program. morning. Six six morning. Yes. <laughs> yes, there was a lot more going on. Like people don't do that. It was a family theater. Welcome to What Was That? I'm Gabe Sanchez. It's like deja vu all over again for Lauren Boebert as she finds herself back in the spotlight. Not only did she get so drunk at a Republican event in New York that staff had to cut her off from alcohol, but she also kept trying to take selfies with Donald Trump to the point where his security had to stop her. You're embarrassing yourself. Let's rewind a bit, shall we? Remember when Boebert made headlines for her theater antics? You know, when she was caught red-handed juicing another man's beetle at Beetlejuice the Musical? Boebert was kicked out of Beetlejuice the Musical after she vaped in front of a pregnant woman who asked her to stop, took selfies during the musical, jerked off some guy while she got her breast squeezed in front of children, and yelled and gave the middle finger to innocent theater staff. And her excuse was to blame the cameras. You were so enthralled by Beetlejuice, you got carried away. A little bit. You know, Jesse, it's been 20 years um, since I was in the dating scene, and back then there were not infrared cameras um, watching my every move. <laughs> what? Well, it turns out that was just the opening act. Fast forward to December, where she attended the New York Young Republican Club's annual gala. It was supposed to be all glitz and glamour, but Boebert seemed to forget that she was not at a college frat party. Witnesses say Boebert was cut off from the booze train by the staff who thought that she was getting a tad too rowdy. A moment that was probably more awkward than a Boebert crime family reunion. Here's a clip of Boebert at the gala. How are you doing? I'm here at uh, Mar-a-Lago supporting Carrie Lake, and it was a fantastic evening and our Trump is here. Oops, sorry. That was a drunk Roseanne bar at a recent Trump Mar-a-Lago party. Anyway, here's Lauren Boebert actually at the New York Gala after what I assume is her 11th Long Island iced tea. Speaking of Long Island trash, here's Boebert with George Santos at the gala, just days after he was expelled from Congress. And here's Boebert with fellow fascist Matt Gates and Steve Bannon. And here's a play-by-play -play of Boebert creepily stalking Donald Trump to get a selfie with him. And as we know from Beetlejuice, Boebert loves her selfies. She loves him so much that her desperate attempt to take selfies with Donald Trump caused his security detail to step in and say, no thank you ma'am. But fear not, Boebert already got Trump's golden seal of approval. And Lauren, you're gonna do fantastically in your district. Lauren Boebert, thank you. Lauren's from afar. But she's here and... Because of course Trump did. She's another perverted criminal pushing the Republican Party's fascistic ideologies. But we shouldn't be surprised by any of Boebert's embarrassing behavior. We know that she's a drunk who loves taking photos with Donald Trump. As you can clearly see in this photo with her Let's Go Brandon dress, the one that she tried to copy from AOC's Tax the Rich dress. Oh, and this would also be the same room where Trump hid his classified documents. Totally safe and secure, just like that Mar-a-Lago bathroom. But when Boebert isn't juggling selfies and cocktails, she's trying to convince voters that she's more than just a one-hit wonder in Congress that is not abandoning them. Today, I am announcing my candidacy for the 2024 Republican nomination to represent Colorado's fourth congressional district in the United States House of Representatives. It's the right move for me personally, and it's the right decision for those who support our conservative movement. This is the right move for Colorado, for us. Since the first day I ran for public office, I promised I would do whatever it takes to stop the socialists and communists from taking over our country. Well, good luck with that, Boebert, because your constituents think you're a carpetbagger, which you are. Lauren Boebert is running away like a scared little bunny rabbit from a very tough dis uh, race in a purple district to go, like she, she, she's abandoning us to a Democrat because she can't take the heat. So now she's gonna go run in one of the most conservative districts in the nation, not just Colorado, like the whole country. This is, what, this is a deep, deep red district here. A Democrat has 
virtually no chance of winning. What are you doing here? Get your ass back home and defeat Adam Frisch. You sell out. Even Boebert's Republican rivals have rightfully attacked her as a carpetbagger in the first debate in Colorado's 4th District. Well, originally I had a very polite question for Jerry Sonnenberg, but uh, <laughs> since the young lady at the end of the table decided to talk about my gun rights, I'd like to ask her just a really simple question. And that is, uh, could you like give the definition of carpetbagger to me? Um. After that debate, Boebert finished fifth in a straw poll. As I mentioned, nine candidates on stage tonight. The audience also took a straw poll. Former state Senator Jerry Sonnenberg won that straw poll. Congresswoman Lauren Boebert finished fifth. So she is obviously hoping that things will be different on June 25th for the Republican primary. And even after getting Trump's endorsement, she lost another straw poll. That's embarrassing. Lauren Boebert is definitely one of the most unprofessional people in Congress. Now, if you want to look better than the Republican Party, make sure to check out today's sponsor, Roan. If you're like me, you understand the pain points of finding what to wear. Most clothes are either uncomfortable or they're too tight or they never actually fit your size. And when you do have a good fit, you can only wear it for a few hours before you have to change out of it for an important meeting, dinner, or some other outing. Now, everyone wants to dress well at all times because simply put, it's a confidence booster, even for me when filming my show. Men's closets were due for a radical reinvention and Roan stepped up to the challenge. Roan's commuter collection is the most comfortable, breathable, and truly versatile set of products known to man. We're talking about the world's most comfortable pants, dress shirts, quarter zips, polos, and blazers. They look great as individual pieces and work seamlessly together. Roan's signature four-way stretch fabric is breathable, flexible, and works everywhere from your commute to work to the 19th hole. It's time for unparalleled confidence without the hassle. Roan's commuter collection features wrinkle release technology and is 100% machine washable. Looking good is that easy. Treated with gold fusion anti-odor technology for more wears between washes, you'll be fresh and clean all day long. So long, lingering odors. Roan has seriously become my new favorite outfit. I mean, I'm wearing it right now and I even wore it on a recent trip out of the country. And after a day of sitting on a plane, taking public transit and walking around in it, my shirt and pants were not only wrinkle free, but also fresh and odor free. I know, it's crazy. The commuter collection can get you through any workday and straight into whatever comes next. Head to roan.com slash Gabe and use promo code Gabe to save 20% off your entire order. That's 20% off your entire order when you head to roan.com slash Gabe and use promo code Gabe. It's time to find your corner office comfort. And now, Bobert seems to see the writing on the wall and has followed in the path of the cowardly Ted Cruz by starting a podcast on Rumble. I'm a fan of Botox. Okay, actually, Side note, let's tell a little story here. I may need some more. Yesterday, I was walking on the Capitol Hill complex and this group of students got really excited and I hear them and they go, hey, that's Nancy Pelosi. Another one says, oh my gosh, yeah, that is. that's Nancy Pelosi. I started looking around, it's me. I'm like, oh Lord, oh Lord, I need, I need some Botox. <laughs> I don't think I've ever been so insulted in my life. All right, one, that never happened. Two, that is a terrible joke. And three, Lauren Boebert's obsession with Nancy Pelosi is incredibly unhealthy. I mean, to the point where Lauren Boebert was tracking Nancy Pelosi's movement on January 6th and then posting it on Twitter. Oh, and if you thought that story about Nancy Pelosi was bad, just watch this. Also, uh, there's a documentary that was put together in line with this book, and uh, it's called a letter to the American church. And it, it really emphasizes the need for Christians to take a stand. In Nazi Germany, there were some 24,000 churches, 3,000 churches sided with Hitler and the Nazis. 3,000 were adamantly opposed, saying this is wrong what you are doing to the Jews. But there was 18,000 churches who stayed silent. They did nothing. And so if we do nothing, if we remain silent, we lose by default and we have the government that we deserve. One way that you can have your voice heard is, um, is contacting your representatives and your senators when bad legislation comes up like this and let them know where you stand because we need them to hear you. We need that pressure. And there's this. I want you to say certain things, but that's nothing new. Cancel culture has been around from the very beginning. So don't be intimidated when they want to cancel you. King canceled Abel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Well, King Nebuchadnezzar tried to cancel them, but there was another one that stood in the fire with them. And they came out unsinged, not even smelling like smoke. 
They tried to cancel Jesus, but you can't cancel God. On Twitter, a lot of the, the little Twitter trolls, they like to say, oh, Jesus didn't need an AR-15. How, how many AR-15s do you think Jesus would have had? Well, he didn't have enough to keep his government from killing him. So, yikes. At the end of the day, Lauren Boebert is a loser who has no chance of winning Colorado's 4th District, but wants to play victim and blame Ken Buck. So now here's the latest. As I said last week, the Uniparty is pulling out all the stops. They've set up a special election on the same day as my primary to confuse voters, and they're rigging the vacancy committee uh, to nominate the establishment's choice. This is a Ukraine first candidate that Ken Buckle is supporting behind the scenes. He knows that he can't come out and publicly endorse this Ukraine first candidate because Ken Buck is not well respected in Colorado's fourth district any longer. And now Bobert has become even more of a joke after her new humiliating drunken scandal. Um, I will say Mel, there's also some undertones here with uh, those who have been kind of working to undermine Lauren Bobert. I talked to Tim uh, uh, Burchett, Congressman Burchett, uh, a little while ago. He's tight with Ken Buck, who is uh, leaving Congress in possibly no small part to prevent Boebert from winning. Here's what Burchett told me. So you think he is retiring or leaving Congress early specifically to prevent Lauren Boebert from being in Congress? I don't know if that's his intention, but there's a lot of talk of that. This is a made for TV movie, ma'am. <laughs> Mayford is not wrong, right? Yeah. I mean, because basically Buck piecing out here denied her an opportunity to use a kind of a different mechanism to get, get this seat, right? Well, Boba herself believes that Buck did this move on purpose to try to kneecap, kneecap her. Now, I will say that last week there was a development that was a big boost for her because instead of selecting um, one of her primary opponents to fill out the rest of that term, they did select someone who's going to be more of a caretaker role. So that person is not going to be running in the fall. So that was a big boost for her. She got a big break in that development. But like I said, she's still got to go up against these other very pro-Trump Republican candidates in this district who are actually from the district and right. who don't have as much baggage as yeah, she Yeah, let's remember, she is actually a carpetbagger here. It's something her opponents are leveling at her, but it's very obvious. Carpetbagger. <laughs> well, that's all for me today. Thanks so much for watching, and feel free to follow me at I am Gabe Sanchez. And if you're a fan of the show and want to contribute, you can subscribe to my Patreon at patreon.com slash I am Gabe Sanchez. Over there, you'll get early access to episodes, bonus content, and exclusive merch. So until next Next episode, I'm Gabe Sanchez, and this has been What Was That?